Uh, welcome to Aspen Updates in an Instant for 2301. Hard to believe it's already 2023. Um, so let me share screen. We've got lots to go over today. Um, so we did have another point release um, to fix a few things that couldn't wait until the full release. I'm just going to talk through some highlights of that. Um, so we're like is typical, these tend to be like ILS things where unexpected things happen with ILSs that need to get fixed um, sooner rather than later. So Evergreen, we, we did a lot to make sure to improve some performance for that. We've got some very, very large consortiums on Evergreen um, that need additional performance for that. So it's running nice and snappy now, uh, which is great. Um, also made some updates for Evolve um, for Symphony as well. Um, for Symphony, we're doing a lot to update different hold ranges. Um, so you can now, within your library settings, set what hold range you want applied. Um, we've seen some libraries are using group and some libraries are using system. So you now have the um, ability to choose. Um, and of course, you can always do a bulk update of that for all library si systems. Um, We've also been working a lot on volumes, especially volumes that are cataloged inconsistently. So some items on a record have no volume and some have a volume. Um, Symphony does some tricky things with that and we're learning all of their tricks. Um, so we've got a good handle on that. Um, so if you do have that uh, kind of cataloging where um, both show uh, should be in good shape now. Um, also with the volume holds, so there's a few things down here. So um, previously, last month, we'd introduced a star um, to indicate what library owned um, the current hold, since typically getting um, volume of uh, volume from your local library is going to be faster than ordering it across the consortium. That was a little confusing, so we updated it to have the full name. Um, also notice that the full pickup location wasn't used when you placed a volume level hold, so that wasn't defaulting, right? So some good things there that will affect everyone. So the those volume changes are for anybody that's got volumes. Um, looking ahead to 2301. Um, whoop, we've got Aspen Lita updates. Those will get updated shortly, um, the release notes for those. Um, and Jordan's going to talk about all of those good changes in a little bit. So um, we've got, um, so under your account on and the My Account, we added um, information for who is linking to you. So we just want to continue to kind of raise the visibility of that. Um, that's something we've been working on for the last couple of months um, where you can, there's more linking capability um, and then clicking on learn more about linked accounts, of course, goes to that where you can manage your accounts and do all of that good stuff we showed last time. Um, along the theme of doing more with linked accounts, I'm just going to sign out, sign in as our administrator. Um, so you can now control who can link to who by patron type. So for example, if we don't want any of our ILL patrons to be linked to, um, or if we didn't want any of our staff or anything, um, or self-check people or self-registered people, we can go through and modify those. So we're gonna say, okay, rather than allowing them to link to anybody, we're gonna say, nope, there is no link linking at all um, for ILL patrons, because. It's a little weird, they're ILL patrons. Um, based off that and based off what your setting was and what your setting is, um, we're gonna display a message just saying how that affects people. So if we save this, we're gonna break all of those linked accounts for any user with that patron type. We can save that and then that'll then happen. Um, so we need to still save those changes. Um, so you've got the opportunity to cancel if you don't want to. Um, and if we wanted to similarly say like, hey, um, maybe self-registered or let's see, let's uh, let's say for library staff, we want them to only link to other people. So similar thing. So 
a library staff person can link to other people, but people can't link to them just for staff privacy, maybe. So, um, so some great functionality there. Um, also some good ease of use things for browse categories. So if we, um, oops, go ahead and save that. Um, if we create a browse category now, last time we added the ability for whether or not um, you're gonna add that to the home page right away. Um, so we're gonna say add to browse. And we're going to create a new one. We're going to say we don't want to add to the home page now. So maybe we're, we're creating some new ones that we want to do later. So we're going to create snow. Then the next time we add things, so let's say Valentine's Day, we're working ahead here. So here we're going to go back down. We're going to create add to browse category again. We'll create another new one. So now that's defaulted off so that you don't have to keep checking and unchecking that. Um, also, when you do add as a subcategory, we're adding the ID of the um, list because some people have find it easier to identify them by number so that they can go find those easily. Um, so some good changes there. The next one's a big one here. So um, with in the location and library settings, and this is something that we tend to help a lot of libraries set up um, or do the entire setup for you. Um, so let's look at just our main library here. So previously we had records owned and records to include. We've combined those tables, which has a bunch of advantages. So um, now everything that you can use to determine if something is included, you can also use to determine if it was owned. So we definitely found, especially with people like setting up kids collections, um, that it could be really hard because there we just needed more fine grained control over that. So we've gone through and added um, all of the same capability. You can choose if Aspen treats those records as owned or or just included by checking the owned. Um, checkbox and then everything that you used to be able to do plus some so we've added the ability to exclude certain things so like i types used to be able to include certain ones but we find that sometimes it's easier to just exclude certain ones um, same thing with audiences so maybe you don't want any kids materials or any adult materials in your um, collection we can pick specific formats and shelf locations and collection codes so you really have the power to do all kinds of great things. Um, so hopefully that really helps people as they set up some kids collections. Um, next, we've had a lot of people talking about um, Novelist. So, um, and we're getting a lot of questions around Novelist. Um, so the first thing we did was under our enrichment, there's now a Novelist API information. What this will let us do is we can enter an ISBN. So that's this is the ISBN for Mockingjay. And so this pulls back the actual full response from Novelist. Um, it's probably something that we may use most internally for debugging, but uh, it's great for everybody to have um, in order to be able to see what all is going on with Novelist? Are they actually giving us all the right ISBNs? Is there an ISBN that's missing? You can match that to your collection to say like, oh, we have ISBN 9780439023481, but it's for a different book or something. So um, it just lets us do that. And then we can actually validate that. And if we find issues, we can send those back um, to Novelist to get fixed. So um, you have the ability to do information just for the single book, um, the current book that's in there, or you can say, give us data for all of the records in the series. The data here is quite extensive, so I'm not gonna go through all of it or anything. Um, the other thing that we did do is, um, so let's search for just Hunger Games again. If for some reason you don't like the series data, um, that Novelist is giving back. So in this case, Hunger Games Trilogy is what's going to be indexed. If you say, no, I really don't like that, um, then let's, let's 
close synthetics unbound, go into staff view. If you do set display info and say, nope, this is not Hunger Games trilogy, I just want this to be Hunger Games. Um, or maybe I wanted it to be Hunger Game books or something, whatever your local practices are. Aspen will then respect that um, and will go through and prefer whatever you enter into the display information. So um, a good way to just override what Novelist is doing because nobody's perfect, we can't get everything right. So we'll let, give, give you control over um, the things. All right. Then more changes. So um, website indexing, we've updated um, through popular request. Um, in the settings now, instead of instead of providing a um, a URL, just the URL, the starting URL, you can actually provide a site map. So if for some reason your site is a little tricky to um, spider. You can just provide a site map with all of those um, URLs in it. And then Aspen can just look at those one right after another. Um, all the rest of the functionality is still, still the same, but hopefully this helps with some of those trickier uh, um, sites that, that are a little harder to, to spider and crawl. Um, so still set it up the exact same way. Um, and pick what you want, and then Aspen will go through and read the site map and, and index each of those URLs. Um, couple more things to talk about. You may have noticed um, it's subtle, but all of the admin screens now, if you are using the full width header, are also shown full width. So they're no longer scrunched down. So as I expand this out, the form gets a little bit bigger. Um, if I'm looking at a list of things, so if I'm looking at all of those web builder settings, save that. Um, and if I'm looking at that, I can see a little bit more. So just a nice way to be able to see more without scrolling. Um, so more ease of use things. Okay, the next thing we did <coughs> is big. So we updated to PHP 8, as well as Smarty 4.3. Smarty is kind of the underlying engine we use for laying out pages. Um, and PHP 8 is just the latest version of PHP. So we wanted to make sure that we were on that um, just as security releases come out and that kind of thing. We make sure that we're on the latest and greatest. Um, these are actually big changes. Um, I would like to thank some of our partners that have been helping us with some of that testing. So um, main, uh, libraries in New Jersey, um, Nashville Public Library in Tennessee, and Swan Library Consortium have all been doing a bunch of testing um, just to help find weird things. So the downside with changing underlying uh, functionality like that is it gives the opportunity for things to break in unexpected ways. Um, we think we've caught most of them, but certainly we are going to be testing it very, 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 very hard the next week and a half or so. And anybody that has a test server or um, that is impl in the implementation, if you see anything, please let us know. And the more testing that we can get, um, the better. So um, it definitely helps us to, to have you all helping out with that. Um, each library has a little bit different data, so it can be hard to catch some of the subtleties, no matter how hard we try on our test systems. Um, the other thing that I'm not gonna demo today, but that we are doing as a result of that PHP 8, the functionality we use to export to Excel is no longer supported. Um, what we are going to do is transition that to where they can export to, so the things that you used to be able to export to Excel, will be able to be exported to CSV and all of the Excel and Excel-like programs. So whether you're using OpenOffice or Google Sheets, we'll all be able to import those spreadsheets easily. Um, and then we don't have to rely on that third-party functionality that might break or have other issues. Um, any questions about any of that? Or I'll turn it over to Jordan to... I see that Steve has his hand raised. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, just a, it's a 
more of a question and a comment. So we're we're not on Aspen yet or Aspen Lita yet, but we're looking forward to that day. Yeah. And uh, you were mentioning the um, the sign in process, and um, wanted to ask you about the have you worked out the library card changes situation? So we just realize that Kapira, who is our current app provider, if somebody loses their library card, goes to the library and gets reissued a new one, we learned that the app doesn't um, challenge people. It validates their library card once and that's oh. it. So it doesn't provide a way for them to change it or or something like that. And we just wanted to make sure you guys had encountered yeah. that and dealt with that smoothly already. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so Aspen, for both Aspen and Aspen Lita, we are internally looking at the internal user ID um, mm. that the ILS has. So if a barcode is replaced, um, but the actual patron isn't, um, when the patron logs in with their new barcode, it's still going to know that, hey, in Koha or whatever the ILS is, um, it'll be Koha for you, um, that I, I was user 503, I am still user 503, but I have a new barcode, I'm going to validate you, I'm going to preserve all of your old ratings, I'm going to preserve all of your old reading history, um, so all of that's handled. Uh, seamlessly for you. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Anything else before I turned over to Jordan to talk through the Lita? I did have one question, Mark. Yeah. So for the novelist um, updates, uh, is are you able to override the volume information that displays as well, or is it just um, the series title? Yeah, it it's nodding. both of them. So Yep. Okay, yes. good. I know, I know Black Gold's going to be happy about that. So yeah, <laughs> yep. That's really cool. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. So you're able to, to go through and fix everything to make sure that your data is matching the series data. So. Yes. Thank you so yep. much, you guys. Very cool. <laughs> um, all right. Anything else? Going once, going twice. All right. Take it over, Jordan. Okay. Let me get our Lita emulator pulled up. We have a bunch of fun stuff to show you. Okay, so here's Lita, and you saw a bunch of the kind of second round of linked accounts things that Mark showed you building off of what we did last month. The other thing we did is a lot of linked accounts work in Lita. So I'm signed in here. I'm going to go into my account, and you see that I have linked accounts and the number of linked accounts right here. Again, putting the number here is to kind of let people know, like a little bit of a visual reminder that yes, like you do have some linked accounts here. Uh, now within Lita, you can both add additional accounts to manage. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one because that one's new. And it's the same as it is in discovery, just um, username and password. You get the message accounts linked successfully and it appears right here. Uh, you also have the ability, you could see before other accounts that can view this account, but you can remove these both as well. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this test res account. Account's no longer linked and it disappears. And let's say this YA one was a mistake. I'm going to go ahead and remove it and it disappears. So now we have the full add, remove all of that here within Lita. Uh, we also added within barcodes the ability to show all barcodes for linked accounts. So here I have my main card and then I would still link to that test res card and you can that get that card here. The other really fun thing we did with this screen is that from now on in Lita, when you come to this card screen, your phone will automatically go to full brightness. We got some feedback from some libraries that um, patrons were having trouble scanning their barcodes from Lita because it wasn't bright enough. Um, so if you think if you've used like an airline app where and you think about when you go to your boarding pass and often your phone gets really bright, that's exactly what Lita will do right now on this um, on this screen. So just making sure that you have all the barcodes in one place and that uh, your barcodes can be scanned because they're bright enough. Uh, the other thing we did with linked accounts is that we now have notifications for linked accounts. This is an emulator and I the same thing, we can't show the brightness, obviously, here. We can't show the notification settings in an emulator, but I do want to show you uh, where they are. So the same place notification settings were before in, under preferences. 
and then manage notifications. On your phone, when you toggle this on, you'll get options for different kinds of notifications. There is a new notification for alerts about my library account. Um, and if you have that alerts about my library account on, you will get a notification anytime somebody links to your account. So um, let's say it's, I don't know, two adults, uh, one, both of them have Lita, one links to the other. The second adult then will get a notification saying, hey, your account has been linked to um, by this other account. And then directions from there, just like we have in Aspen Discovery. Uh, I think that's it for linked accounts. So let's go ahead. We did a couple of other things um, within my account. So we have just a couple of little refresh buttons. So um, sometimes within Aspen, it takes a minute or so uh, to, to show holds or checkouts. So if you need to see those right away, you can reload holds right here. I don't have one, but if there was a new one, it would show. We do have the same thing. Oop. We do have the same thing for checkouts under checked out titles, um, the reload checkout titles button. Uh, the next thing we did was we now have full reading history within Lita, which is really exciting and all of the functionality that we also have in Aspen. So uh, first of all, we have this sort here. You can sort by title, author, last user format. I'll go ahead and sort by title. I'm gonna go ahead and show you also support by author. There we go. Um, you can delete all, and of course, you're always going to get a warning message. So I'm not going to delete them because we're still working with them, but you would click OK and they would all delete. Um, you can also stop recording my reading history, which is the same as delete, but also turns it off. And again, you get the message right here. Um, warning patrons about what's going to happen. OK, and then it would stop recording your history. We also do have the same privacy notice. So um, our patrons understand what is happening with the reading history. Uh, it's the same message that we have in Discovery. It's just that um, we, we can consolidate it because otherwise you wouldn't even get to your reading history until you got all the way down here. Um, so we have a privacy notice. Patrons can choose to click on it if they want to. One more thing uh, with reading history, if you want to, you can delete an individual item just like you can in Aspen. So you can either view item details, that's gonna take you to the item page or delete the item from reading history. And then Us Weekly will go away. And it reloads with nothing there. Uh, the final thing that I'm gonna show you today is actually quite a big deal. Um, if you've been using Lita for a while, you know that although we have the grouped works where everything comes together, we don't have this single button where you can place a hold um, for across all of the bibs within a grouped work. But uh, we do have that now. The reason we chose to do that right now is it's actually giving us quite a good performance Im improvement on loading these group work pages. We were having pages with a whole bunch of bib information. It was taking a long, long time to load. Um, so now we have that. So I'll go ahead and show you how that works. We have where the credits sing. I'm gonna go into the title. And I know that we have multiple um, multiple editions of the book. So we still have the where is it? Um, and you can still, of course, see all of those together. We have the show editions. Um, you can choose to place a hold on an individual edition. Where is it for those individual editions? Or we have the place hold button right here that is works just the same way um, as any other place hold button does in Aspen or Lila. A couple of other smaller things. We moved the settings for Lita notifications to Lita admin. Uh, we got the feedback that that was confusing, having it in a different place. So now all of your settings are together in Lita admin. We also did some um, bug fixes around New York Times lists, user lists. Um, on some devices that enable notifications wasn't working. So we made sure that that's working now. And a couple of things with holds and statuses. Uh, any, any questions? I'm gonna check my chat. Any questions on the Lita updates? I see some woohoos and loves it. That's good to see. Um, I'll go ahead and stop share and hand it back over to Morgan.